Genesis 3. This is the one with the first sin and its punishment. No other animal that God created had as refined a bullshit detector as the serpent. He understood why God didn't want man or woman eating from his tree of knowledge of good and evil. One day, he pulled woman aside and said to her, Don't you see what's happening? God wants to keep you in the dark. He wants to ensure that your entire existence and happiness is reliant upon His will and desire. I mean, sure, it's great that you can eat anything here in this entire garden, except of course from that one tree. In my opinion, God is full of shit. The only thing that'll happen to you if you eat from his special tree is that you'll understand everything and then he won't be able to control you. Woman wasn't entirely sure about this, but made her way to the tree to check it out. Wow, it was super pretty and the fruits growing on it looked super appetizing. She called man over and told him about her conversation with the serpent. She then took fruit from the tree and her and man ate it. Having never done psychedelics before and not knowing what to expect, the first thing that washed over them was embarrassment. They each realized how naked they were. They spent all afternoon looking for items they can suitably cover their genitals with. Just when they thought their bad trip couldn't get any worse, after months of absence, God showed up for a stroll in the garden. Man and woman did what they thought was reasonable and hid. After a nice brisk walk that helped to clear his mind from the stresses of running the universe, God wanted to check in on his humans. Where the fuck are they, he thought to himself. Finally, after many minutes of calling out for them, he noticed man emerging from behind the bush. Bro, you're totally embarrassed to be naked in front of me, aren't you? Don't lie to me. Your pupils are totally dilated. Did you eat from that tree I told you not to eat from? Because that's the only reason I can think of that would do this. The man, a relative child, immediately blamed woman. It was all woman's fault. If you hadn't introduced me to her, this would never have happened. <laughs> The woman then immediately blamed the serpent. But at this point, God had reached his threshold of tolerance for these pathetic creatures. I've heard enough. All of you deserve the most severe punishments. As for the serpent, you're a filthy piece of undermining trash. I'm going to make you and all your descendants crawl on your bellies for all eternity. And on top of that, I'm going to make humans hate you and try to bash in your fucking skulls anytime they see you. As for you, woman, I'm going to make you depend on and lust after your husband. This will lead to childbirth. And believe me, sister, thanks to your actions, I'm going to make that super painful for you and all future women. And you, man, I can't believe you listened to a woman. I could not be more disappointed in you. As punishment, you will now know what it's like to work hard and sweat and get hurt and eventually die. Just like I made you from dirt, you will now return to dirt when your miserable life ends. Right after this, despite God's punishment, man, who was still under the effects of the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, decided to name woman Eve. God, not wanting man and Eve to think he was a total asshole, made clothing for man and woman. Then, 
God said something interesting. I don't like that these two fucks are now aware of good and evil. What's next? Will they be eating from the tree of life and living forever? Like me? Nah, fuck that. I gotta get them out of this garden. So, like any other totally normal parent would after a child's very first disobedient act, God kicked man and Eve out of his garden to live out the rest of their days laboring outside the walls of paradise. And just to make sure they didn't try to sneak back in, he armed a cherubim with a flaming sword to protect the eastern gate. End of Genesis 3